Shave a ring of lead, they said. You'll be safe from chain fire, they said. Let's talk about why that might get you in trouble and what you need to check on your revolver before you head to the range. Let's get into it. Howdy everybody, if you're new to black powder revolvers, you've probably heard from everybody on YouTube that when you load a round ball into each of the chambers on your cylinder that you need to get a ring of lead just like this to ensure that you have a proper seal and to prevent chain fire. Let's explain for a second the reasoning behind this just in case this is the first time you've heard about this and then we'll get into what you need to look for to make sure that you're safe out there on the range. You see, when you take a 36 caliber revolver like this and you measure it with calipers, the inside diameter of each of the chambers of the cylinder are going to be 0.36 inches. Now, if you were to take a round ball that was 0.36 inches and put it inside each of those chambers, basically the outer diameter of the round ball would match the inner diameter of the chamber. And since they're the same size, basically your round ball would fall out if you were to just turn the gun over or give it a little shake. You could also experience chain fire, which is when you pull the hammer back and pull the trigger, it ignites the cap, the powder, and the round ball. But since you have an undersized round ball in each of the chambers, the burning powder that flares out here uh, between the forcing cone and the cylinder can go inside the next neighboring chamber and go behind the undersized round ball, lighting off that powder, setting off an unfortunate chain of events that'll happen while you're holding the gun. Now, if you take an oversized round ball, say one that's 0.38 inches, it's not gonna fit inside of that chamber, at least without some persuasion. And since lead is softer than steel, once you use the loading lever and push it down, the rim of each of the chambers will cut a lead ring off of the oversized round ball. It cuts this ring of lead off in order to make it fit, and the result is that the round ball will have a little smooth band on it, just like this. The flat band on the round ball is what marries up against the inside walls of each of the chambers. In theory, each of your round balls is now airtight sealed inside each of the chambers and this will lead to greater consistency in your shooting as you'll get maximum velocity without loss of back pressure as the burning powder isn't going around the undersized round ball and instead all of it is going behind it and pushing the properly sized round ball out. And in theory, this will stop or greatly prevent chain fire on the business end of the cylinder. Now, what if I told you you could cut that ring of lead and that each of your round balls could still be undersized, leading to the risk of chain fire? You see, the theory of cutting a ring of lead to ensure that you have a proper seal relies on one big assumption, and that assumption is that Uberti or Pieta have both milled the cylinders properly. And that's asking a lot from my experience with each brand. This theory assumes that the diameter of the rim of each of the chambers is the same diameter as inside of the chamber itself. You see, on my Pieta, I noticed at the range one day that I was having some delayed shots and some shots that just sounded different from the rest of them. When I glanced down at the cylinder, I could see that some of the round balls had worked their way to the front and some of them were still pushed all the way back where I had loaded them. I gave the revolver a little flick of the wrist and most of the round balls came all the way out of the cylinder itself. Thinking back, I had cut a ring of lead on every single one of these chambers, so what went wrong? The issue is with this particular Pieta revolver. I don't know if it's an issue that goes beyond mine, but it's just something you need to look out for. You see, when they milled five of the six of these chambers, they left an imperceivable burr that you couldn't even see or couldn't even feel, but it was overhanging each of the chambers. It looked properly finished. You couldn't even tell by touch, by sight, anything. So essentially what this overhang was doing is that the overhang of the rim of the cylinder was actually a smaller diameter than the inner diameter of the chamber itself. So you see, when I would take a 0.38 inch round ball and force it through, it would cut a ring of lead. However, since the overhang was a smaller diameter than the inner size of each of the chambers, it would cut the round ball to have, say, a 0.357 inch outer diameter. And now I've got a 0.357 inch round ball inside of a 0.36 inch chamber. Essentially, the burr itself made the round ball undersized once it got past the burr and it was now inside of the chamber and it could move around. With a simple flick of a wrist, five of the six of these round balls would shoot to the front and get caught on that burr as they were trying to exit the chamber itself. To further confirm my suspicions, I also put a flashlight behind this and blocked all light, took the cones out, and I looked through and I could see daylight around five of the six round balls. Now to check to see if you have this problem, you don't necessarily have to have a set of precision calipers. Simply do a dry load of your revolver where you simply put a round ball down and no powder behind it. Now once the revolver is loaded, go ahead and take it in your hand and then shake it very violently like you're cracking a whip. And if you have this issue, that's going to force any of the smaller diameter round balls forward. I would then put a small piece of tape next to each of the chambers that are affected. 
That way you know which ones you have to drill out. To unload the revolver, simply take out the cones, turn the cylinder upside down uh, between two wooden blocks so that the round ball has a place to fall. Then I take an old drill bit that I've wrapped some Gorilla Tape around so that the metal won't affect the threads. Put the drill bit through the threaded area where the cones go, and then take a hammer and gently tap out the round ball. Crazy. So how do we fix this? You can take it to a gunsmith if you'd like and pay a bunch of money. You can also buy a new cylinder from a brand and a company that should have got this right in the first place. Since this revolver has given me so many issues in the past and is my least favorite and is now my project gun, as you can tell by the horrible finish, but what I'm trying to do, just on a side note, is remove the uh, gross Pieta stamps on the side, so I'm doing a pretty good job of that. You can't see them anymore. And I'll give it a different patina finish later. Because it's my least favorite, I decided I'd try to fix it myself. So here is what I did. I went to my local hardware store and bought a grinding stone Dremel attachment, and then I put that attachment inside of my drill press. It was the perfect size to fit inside of each of these chambers, and I oiled the stone up with some three-in-one oil. I carefully lined the cylinder up underneath the drill press and held it as hard as I could in place, and I did a few dry runs with the drill press off. I made sure the drill press was on its lowest setting. Once I was ready, I would turn it on and I would lower the drill press ever so slowly till it started to make contact, and once I was sure that I was centered, I'd push it down, and I was going to count to 1,001, but I ended up just doing half of that, and I simply went 1,000. The pressure that I put down on it was light but firm. So essentially a light but firm press with the drill press for about a half a second is all I did. And I took this and I reassembled the revolver. I then did a dry load where I didn't have any powder and I just simply forced six round balls inside. It still cut a ring of lead, but when I went to shake the gun afterwards, all of the round balls stayed exactly where they should. Guys, I just wanted to make you aware of this problem before you head out to the range in case you're new to black powder revolvers. Just something you want to check before you head out there to make sure that you don't encounter chain fire. And the worst part about it is you think you're doing everything right when you cut that ring of lead. But again, you're assuming that the company drilled or milled these out correctly. Now, while I've had my share of problems with Pieta and Uberti brand black powder revolvers, I did not experience this problem on any of my Uberti models. It happened only with my single Pieta revolver, and it happened on five of the six chambers. Since I only have one revolver, that's a small sample size, so take that for what you will. In my opinion, you should trust your firearms to work safely and reliably, but oftentimes you need to verify certain things first, and I think this is one of those things. I hope this helps you all out, and uh, have fun at the range, and uh, safe shooting, guys.